Just letting you know that Richard Price is on YouTube. He's going to be listening. And uh, if you need a comment, if you can, you can, you can take his comments and, and contribute this to the future, right? Okay, good evening, everybody. At 7 o'clock, we're going to call the meeting to order. If, is there anybody taping? Val? Linda Walls? And that's it. If we can please stand up, have a moment of silence, and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. And again, just to tell everybody, um, our board member Richard Feist is on YouTube, and he's he's on uh, this. Okay, thanks, Jim. Okay. Um, first thing on the agenda is the um, approval of minutes. Um, we are going to go ahead and table the minutes for uh, February 21st and March 26th. We found out uh, we did not put some um, money marks in those. And we want to make sure they're correct. So I make a motion to table the minutes for the February 21st and the March 26th, um, 2024. Do I have a second? All in, is there any discussion on the board on that? Um, there was no monetary. Um, yes. Anybody else? Okay, do I have a vote to make a motion to table the minutes for March, for February 21st and March 26th? All in favor? Aye. Unanimous? Okay. Um, and that leaves us with the minutes for the March 20th for the annual membership and the organizational meeting for both those. I make a motion to approve those minutes. Do I have a second? Any discussion on the board? No? All in favor? Aye. Unanimous? Rich voted yes for the second first one. Okay. Okay. And Linda, do you want to read the... Rich voted um, uh, yes for the second one also. Yes, for the second. Richard voted yes for both. And Linda Wall seconded the last motion. Okay. okay. Okay, this letter is dated March the 28th, 2024. BCPO Board of Directors, we are ready to request and establish a second tennis club to be named Brookridge Deuce Court Tennis Club. This club is designed for anyone wanting to play tennis at a 3.0 level or higher. However, all residents, renters, and guests of BCPO members are welcome to play. Our objective is to welcome and work with players that want to bring their tennis game to a higher level in both doubles and singles play. We would use court number two, which has previously been discussed with BCPO President Debbie Coble and the existing tennis club. 
summer hours beginning the first Monday in May to September the 15th, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, court number two only. Winter hours beginning September the 16th to first Monday in May, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., Monday through Saturday, court number two only. Annual dues, $10. Players can play for a month free of charge before deciding if they'd like to join. Thank you for considering our request. We know there are players in Brookridge who would definitely join this club and like the opportunity to play tennis beyond first level skills. Sincerely, Tina Thomas, co-chair, unit number three, Dave Luca, co-chair, unit number six. I make a motion to allow a second tennis club named Brookridge Deuce Court Tennis Club, all residents, renters, and guests of BCPO members are welcome to play. Details are listed above. I'll go ahead and second that. Is there any discussion among the board? I, I've briefly spoken to both uh, both groups a, a, a little while back, and I think there's an agreement with both groups. So I, I don't see any any issues going forward. And also, the the pickleball folks did not have any real impact on that either. All right. All right. Does anybody else? Catherine, did you have anything? No? no? Okay. All right. All in favor of allowing the uh, new club, the Brookridge Deuce Court Tennis Club, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes, for Rich. Yes, for Richard. So it's a unanimous. Okay, this letter is from Tracy McGumber, Agenda Speed Hump. Letter dated March the 17th, 2024 at 311 p.m. The Traffic Safety Committee would like to propose the addition of a speed hump located on Hampton Avenue, just past the crosswalk closest to Country Club Drive. See photo. The inclusion of a speed bump in the area will slow traffic in the clubhouse area where pedestrians are prevalent. The Traffic Safety Committee would appreciate your approval on this matter. Thank you, Chair Tracy McCumber and the Traffic Safety Committee. Public Works Supervisor Vince Pizzo will speak with the Zelly Hating to get price to see if the hunt can be done when Azarelli is in the community doing the road work. I make a motion to move forward with the placement of a speed bump, speed hump located on Hampton Avenue, just past the crosswalk closest to Country Club Drive. I'll second that. Is there any discussion on the board? Oh, I'm sorry, Catherine. I didn't turn it away. Um, I called the fire department because I knew that there had been issues before putting a hump there due to emergency vehicles. So I contacted the fire department. They said that they would be willing to come and look at the area to make sure that it is conducive to um, their stretchers and emergency vehicles, being able to get hoses and equipment off there. Sometimes humps put in different places create difficulty, and I believe that that's, that's why it wasn't um, done before. Did they say when they're going to come out? Well, I'm supposed to call next Thursday because he was on vacation, and he has someone that can come out then. Is this the inspector? The ins uh, no, I spoke with the captain. Okay. Yeah. All right. I spoke with the captain, not the inspector. Okay. Well, the captain did the fire inspect inspector. He was involved with the original, um, when they came here originally to discuss the hump being put out there, 
and he said with new equipment and things that he'd have to revisit that. So I don't know if that's something that we wanted to have him come in and talk with us about or at least take a look at and then revisit it afterwards. May I make a recommendation? Yeah. yeah. May I make a recommendation, guys? Yes. Uh, what I'd like to suggest is that we um, consider granting conditional approval upon them coming out. And the reason for that is we won't have another board meeting before the paving people are here. So if we say, yes, we're going to do it, assuming the uh, fire department and any other emergency department does not have an issue with it, then we would at least have the ability to move forward because the paving company starts May 5th, was it? 6th. May 6th. Six. So that's my suggestion. Or even if we do a conditional approval and they say it needs to be at this spot and we thought it might have been at this spot, are we willing to go along with what the fire department people are saying? Well, I'm willing to go along with it as long as they come check it out. Right. And are you going to meet them here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right and show them where we want to have it and where they think we should have it. Correct. And he did say that he would give me the write-up on it if I needed it, if he didn't have time to be able to meet with everybody. Get it right. No, because the we're going to start the paving. This okay. was going to be part of kind of a lesser amount of money. Okay. And then would you consider, would you be able to meet with Vince? Oh, I'll let Vince know ahead of time. So. He could be out here with the fire department at the same time, sure. and also maybe Tracy McCumber. Yeah, Tracy, where are you? Oh, right here. Would you be willing to meet with Catherine? Okay, in the fire department? Okay. All right, I think, how do you feel okay with that then? Okay, okay, how does everybody, okay. All right, so I, I I go ahead and make a motion on conditional approval with the fire department on where they would like this hump to put to be put in outside the clubhouse area. Do I have a um, a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Rich votes yes to another conditional approval. Okay, yeah. okay another letter from Tracy McGumber, Agenda Gate, dated March the 17th. 2024, the Traffic Safety Committee would like to propose that the following for the outbound gates, both visitors and residents remain up during the hours of 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. This would expedite moving the vehicles through the gates and also allow the gate guards to focus on inbound traffic. If need be, for any unforeseen reason, the gates would return to normal operation. The Traffic Safety Committee would appreciate your approval on this matter. Thank you, Chair Tracy McCumber and the Traffic Safety Committee. I make a motion to have the exit gates, both visitors and residents remain up during the hours of 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., seven days per week. If necessary, the gates would return to normal operation. Do I have a second? Uh, do we have a discussion? I know we have Paul that wants to say, do we have a discussion on the board regarding this? Yes, ma'am. We advertise that we're a gated community. Uh, I'm not in favor of having the gates left open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I think we need to focus on getting the one outbound gate repaired and operational so that we are a gated community again. I know that the, I know that the gentleman that's been working on them 
was in an accident and had several surgeries, but we need to move forward and get, get that gate fixed. Right. Well, from the conversation he had with Arlene, he came and saw Arlene. Before he can put the part on for the outbound gate, all every single barcode has to be put in the system. So with that barcode goes the UBL number, name, address, phone number, uh, emergency contact, and everything for did he say how many Arlene it was about it was several thousand if I hello okay. So um, he did have his assistant working on it. That's all she's been doing seven days a week, eight hours a day. She's doing it by hand. This isn't something that could just be push a button and it's done. And he said there were approximately 8,000 barcodes that had to be entered from the old system to the new system. So it was taking a while. So he said when we, we spoke, I think, last Friday he came by, she had about 380 left to go. Because don't forget, even if you have 2,800 properties-ish, you have two cars, you have two cars, I have, and then some people, you know, have RVs. Right. Some, you know, some people are blessed to have a beautiful, you know, Corvette. Or, <laughs> um, well, you know, the classics. I love the classics myself. So a lot, of, a lot of people do have more than one vehicle. So that's why it was taking a bit of time. He does have the part for the AI beater, which is the thing that feeds the barcode. He has that. But he said, I'm not going to put it in until the barcodes are entered. There's no point. So. He did say probably, and this is probably, it's not written in stone, about two weeks will be completely finished. And then the gate will be operational again. Right. Nothing Call. mechanical, right? Yeah. Nothing mechanical. No. Yeah. Hi, Paul Campbell, Unit 2. Uh, one of the reasons my wife and I moved into Brookridge was because it is a 24-hour gated community. Uh, I'm sure many other residents have moved into Brookridge because of that 24-hour gated community. Now it's being suggested that the gate be left open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., making Brookridge a 12-hour gated community. We have beautification volunteers working outside the guide shack on the plantings. We've got public work employees working on the medians outside the guide shack. We've got people journeying from Tundra to Brookridge Central to get to Cortez, to take a left to get in, to come home basically. With residents, vendors, and guests, and all others that come in, knowing that the gates are open between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., they'll be hitting the first speed bump slowly because it's high, and then hitting the gas and going right through the gates. In my opinion, keeping the gates open is not in the best interest of volunteer, employee, or driver safety. Uh, I'd like to share my view, just so that we're clear. We're talking about the outbound gates. So this is my perspective. When you want to leave the park, we should be able to get people out of here as fast as possible. We're not going to keep anyone in the park. There's no scenario in my mind that we would stop somebody from exiting the park by keeping the gate down. We don't have the authority to do that. We don't have the legal or police authority to do that. I see it this simple. If somebody wants out, we want to get them out of here. It, it, it's really that straightforward. And to say it's not a gated community, you still have to go through the gates to get in. Getting in is where we should have an issue, and nobody's suggesting that we change that. It's just getting out. Once you're in, you're in. So if you're a bad guy, you're a serial killer, you're a, a, a criminal, you're already in. So that's my perspective, and that's the way I'm going to vote. One last note, I can't also think of a scenario where people are going to try to come inbound through the outbound gate the way the traffic pattern is set up. It's just not conducive. It's not like you can change your mind at the last second and go from inbound to outbound because there's 
or fountains, there's trees, there's stuff in the way. Once you're coming in, you're in. You can't really change your mind and go inbound through the outbound gates. How so that's my view. Right. How would you feel about trying it for 90 days? No, I, I think we either say yes or no. And if I had the minority opinion, great, I have the minority opinion. Right. Okay. But that's just my view. Okay. So the time change comes. I'm sorry? When the time change comes, yeah. you have the gates open in the dark. Mm -hmm. 7 a.m., 7 p.m. It's still yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, okay with that. Because it is, in my view, is Paul is really this simple. If somebody wants to leave, I want them to be able to leave quickly and get out of here. So you know, because we're not we're, we're not going to stop anybody. I mean, know, let's be honest. Still get the stop sign there, which you told me you have never stopped that. So never is well, don't. Never is never is an exaggeration, but I rarely stop. Because people right. outside the gate can still work and volunteer up there. And you have to say, let these people go. Go ahead, somebody wants to speak. No, 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 having the gates um, up from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., seven days a week. Um, and if necessary, um, the gates would return to normal operation. All in favor, say aye. 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 Exit gates only. The exit gates only. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Okay. Yeah. Did you get that, Arlene? Hold on. Richard voted yes. So we have a tie vote. So we have a tie vote. If it doesn't pass. Yes. Right. It doesn't pass. Yeah. Okay. So it does not pass. Yeah. Okay. I'll actually um, make my comments. Um, we have a lot more to get to tonight. Um, I'll make my comments short. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We really appreciate all of you. Um, I want to first start off with um, if we can all keep Michelle Adams in our prayers, um, we would greatly appreciate that. Michelle's a wonderful person, and we wish her well. The other thing, the paving of the paving starts May 6th. So if that also is going to include the RV, if you have an RV that's in there, that's going to have to be moved out, you can put it in your driveway carport or on this far side of the tennis courts down that way while everything is being fit, while everything's being paved. When we get closer to that date, we'll figure out about parking in the median for all those people that need to park there. The AC that we had approved is here. It's out there. That's going to be also um, hooked up when um, they do everything else. The clubhouse is closed starting April 15th for a few weeks. We hope that everything will be done. While they're here servicing the AC, uh, putting in the AC, all the rest of the ACs will need um, the summer maintenance. They plan on doing that too. And the lights at the front of the office will be done when they're here with the AC. And also we'll have the um, electrical company going into the guardhouse to look at all the wiring there. We are suspecting that when we pull out those um, cabinets and countertops, that we actually may find some electrical outlets behind them. Might, we don't know. So that's what we're gonna do. So we have a busy couple of weeks, busy couple of months ahead of us. And we know that traffic might be impacted. Things might not go. We might have to have detours, but if you can all just please have patience with the road crew, with 
events, with public works, with anybody that we have that may be volunteering to help with stuff, traffic safety, maybe um, helping with us just putting up cones and, and doing things. So we would really appreciate all of your patience, especially with code enforcement, um, trying to get signs and things up. So really appreciate it. We have a lot of work going on. So with that said, um, again, thank you for coming. We appreciate all of you. We'll get on to the um, other business. Jim does not have a treasurer's report that will be out uh, next week. It'll be out next week. It'll be, on the, It'll be on the website. It'll be on the website on uh, by Wednesday the, the uh, 17th. There's a, while I'm speaking, I guess I'll cover it real quick. There's a new report on that same website. For people who are wondering, where's the Spectrum money? What did we do with the money? What happened to the money? Where's our nearly a million dollars? There's a spreadsheet. That's what it looks like. It's nice and pretty in colors. It shows what we received, what we've done with the money. So, for example, we received 990 in on May, May I'm sorry, March 20th. We put a couple of seat. We purchased a couple of seat, one month CDs uh, for 241 and 247, and then we earned some interest already on the 31st for 984 dollars and 63 cents. And then we paid the broker fee. Uh, the check was just cl it just cleared today for 49.5, so that leaves us a net of whatever that dollar amount is. But that report is on the website. You're welcome to look at it. It'll be updated as as we make updates to that. All right, next on the agenda is an appeal from a property owners regarding an AVRC hearing. Um, Hope, do you have, can you come up and speak to what happened at the AVRC so we have um, an idea of what all happened? I'm chair of the AVRC. First, let me tell you what the AVRC consists of. We have seven residents, volunteers, who donate their time to be on the AVRC. The committee's task is to review fines imposed for violations and hear residents who appeal their violations. The committee doesn't make the fines for the violation. The AVRC committee follows the guidelines that the board has stated for each violation category. Just a little so you know what the AVRC is all about. I believe the case we're referring to is a case we had at our last meeting in March. Um, the people came in for the appeal, the husband and wife. We also had quite a few um, observers that came in with them. And I guess it caught all of us on the AVRC a little because we've never really had that many spectators or observers come in pertaining to one case. We heard it. The um, couple told us where they got the information from. We looked at it. They didn't have the correct forms. They weren't given the completed forms from the office that we could see at that meeting. It did not seem in the committee's opinion that the forms they received had been copied correctly. They had the even numbered pages, but they didn't have the um, odd numbered pages. So at that point, the residents and their spectators who came in with them 
were asked to leave so we could the committee could talk about this we decided because all we have pertaining to any appeal is what's put in front of us and when the couple told us or showed us what they were given for um, the instructions on or the rules to live in here as far as the guidelines for age groups they did not see the amendment to something they were showing us so the committee decided at that point to not make it a decision and to just forge it to the board Okay, thank you, Hope. The appeal issue is for children as an occupant under the age of 18. And there is two children in question um, that are under the age of 18 that are living here. Is the homeowner here, Dan? Yeah. Do you want to come up, Dan? Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to try to clear this up. Um, Name and unit number four. Uh, unit number four. Dan Gerba. Um, we bought in 2022 during COVID. Um, we bought the house uh, unseen. Um, the first year here, we spent about two and a half months. Um, in, during this time, we were in the deciding, well, we weren't deciding, the courts were deciding whether we would have custody of our two grandsons. And in late 2022, it became apparent that we were going to be keeping them probably for the rest of their lives. So in 2023, uh, we came up in January. We're here for basically five months. The kids are registered in school from January till May, and then we go back. Um, one of the issues that we have um, is we were served this notice on February 1st when we had only been here for 30 days, where legally the boys, any kids under 18, are allowed to be here for 90 days. So we were served a notice that didn't even happen yet. Um, so that was one issue, and this, the notice seemed to come after I was at the at the front gate. I uh, went to uh, talk about why the gate was locked, and that several kids were jumping the fence. And I was told by the school guard it could become a legal problem; kids get hurt. So I brought it to their attention, and then the following week, I get served this notice. It's kind of seems a little funny that I get served a week after I made a complaint about a gate. We've been here two and a half years. This is the first time we've had an issue. We're here for five months. There's families across the street that have kids that moved in last year full time. There's several else down the street. None of them have been served a notice. Um, you know, I, I if you read the rules, there's, there's uh, once you before there's a notice served, there's an inquiry or a report, incident report filed, and then there's supposed to be an investigation. I didn't see any of that. I've been asking for copies of it. Nothing has been given to me because if they would have asked us, we would have told them right there and then we haven't been here 90 days. So why do we get served the notice when we haven't even been here 90 days? Just doesn't seem. Oh, fair. If you want, if, if that's your rule, no kids under 18, that, that, that's fine. It, it is what it is, but the problem is there's several families here that have kids that have just moved in. I just found it a little bit funny that we got centered out after we talked about the game. Okay, you say that there are several families here that have children. Do you have a list of those names and addresses that you can give to us so that we can check into it? I'm not putting anybody. Really? No, no. Okay, well, the only thing is... Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. All right, let me, let me speak first and then you can continue on, okay? 
I understand what you're saying, and yes, I'm, I'm sure there are other families in here with children. We don't know what the circumstances are, but I'm sure we're going to find out. But the thing is, when you purchased in here in 2021, from what I understand, I'm going by what I have. Maybe it could be 21, 22. It's it was 2021. Cool I'm just going by what I have in front of me. Okay. okay? Uh, you signed a new resident packet on January 22nd, 2022. Both you and your wife. Also, November 9th, 2021, you signed a disclosure summary for our community. And uh, article number nine states, nine and 10, as a 55 or above that age restricted community, at least one person occupying an owner's parcel for residential purposes shall be 55 years or older, but no one under the age of 18. Okay, that's fine. So when did the when did you we get, have legal custody of the grandkids? We were on and off. What year was that? Well, it started from when the youngest was. I know, born. but when when did you bring them here? Oh, the, the first year we bought, we spent two months here, and then last year was their first full time in uh, school from January till May. Okay. Another thing too, on your screening application, I'm just showing you what I have in front of me. Okay. This was dated November 1st, 2021, okay. stating that Brookridge Community Property Owners is a 55 or above average restricted community. And I understand that at least one person is 55 or older, which was okay. Nothing was mentioned. It said total number of adults to reside, to reside at residence was two. No children under 18 are permitted. And this was signed in November of 2021. We're not, we're not debating we signed it. I know, but it also says no children under 18. That's fine. But the kids are allowed here for 90 days. But they're not here for 90 days. You, you even you, said that yourself. You said that they go to yes, school here for five they, months. They did last year. This year, we haven't been here. We're allowed 90 days calendar year. This year, we we're here for 30 days, and you service a violation, which is wrong. Can't do that. We have 90 okay, days. can I just ask you one thing? Because um, with being Canadians, okay, from Canada, yeah. how does this with the U.S. schools? How does that work out with the children going here and then going back there? Not an issue. I didn't say it was an issue. I just about their schooling. They get their, their grades get transferred from Canada to here, and then vice versa goes back. Well, I understand that. Okay. It's, but that's that's irrelevant. It's got nothing to do with the kids. The point is, we're being served notices when we haven't even committed a crime yet. It makes no sense. And they're allowed to be here 90 days. And there's no rule saying that I can't take them and transfer them to another house for 90 days. It doesn't cover anything like that. I can transfer them to another family member. The point is, you served us without us having committed the crime yet. And it was a total retaliation because we talked about the gate. One of the one of the code enforcement. Oh, well, sorry. One of the code enforcements last week even told us they came after you because you talked about the gate being locked. And I'm not going to name his name unless this goes further. But I'm not putting anybody in in trouble. He said they probably came after you because you complained about the gate being locked. And I have a witness to that statement. So the whole issue is again, like I'm saying, you have, so we tried to register the kids and we called the front and all we got is, how do you register? Well, we don't know. We have no, you have no mechanism to know how long the kids are here. They could have came here in January. March break is 10 days. They were gone. So that's not, they're not here. So they're gone for 10 days. You have no way of tracking how many days they're here. It's my word against your word. But the biggest problem is we were served the violation before we committed it. And the second thing is you mentioned about codes. In the book, that violation we did is a code two, but yet we were being fined as a code four. How has that changed? 
can change that quote. Let me ask. Yeah, sorry. If I could ask some questions. Yeah. Okay, so now it's, the, the kids came essentially January 1st. Uh, basically, yeah. So, so what would we do every year? What would your solution be? Tell me your solution for what we would do every April 1st of this year, of next year, of the years going forward. If there are, oh, you only have 90 days, what's the solution going forward? Well, like I said, they're really, you, to me, it's what you guys decide. That's the rule. It's the rule. But there's also no me stopping that I can't register my, my sister for 90 days after that. My sister must. There's no rule against that. It, it, it just seems, just so you know my perspective, and, I, and I'll share, this is mine, just mine as a one board member, not as the group. The reason, one of the reasons that we came to this community, and I know that I've spoken to a lot of people, one of the reasons they've come to this community is it's 55 plus. There's no kids. Thank you. Um, there's, there's no commotion, whatever you want to call it. I have grandkids. I know kids are noisy. I get that. But what do we do in the future? And here's another question I have. Is there an interim solution? Could you have the kids here instead of five months a year? Could you have them here 90 days so that you're within the rules and everybody's happy? No, it wouldn't work. We've got to keep them for the full term. That term is... So it's five months or nothing? Is yeah. What you're saying. yeah. It's January. The term is January until May. They graduate at the school year at the end of mid-May. And then we're back home. The issue is we're here five months. We're not here full time. The kids aren't here full time. Right. So what, what we, would you? We didn't know not know that all of a sudden in a 60, 61, and sixty, we would have two young kids. You know, no, I, I get that. It's unforeseen. What, what would we say to all the residents who don't want the kids that moved here just for the reasons that we did? What What would your solution? Not only you with your children, but you mentioned there are other families that have children. Um, what would your solution be? Well. As for us, the kids outside, they're outside, but they're not outside full time. We take them out of the park as much as we can. Um, is that a solution? I don't know. But they're not out running the streets and yelling and screaming like everybody thinks they are. They're in school, they got cubs, they're gone. They got the weekends, they got hockey, they're, they're gone all the time. Um, like I said, we're here five months, not full time. If we're full time, yeah. Like, I see the issue. There could be an issue because then the kids are there. Well, we're, we are going to have the same issue. Not to interrupt you, we're going to have the same issue for Mr. X and Mrs. X with their children that are under eighteen yeah. that are full timers. We're, we're, this this is going to keep coming up over yeah. and over because there's a, a huge percentage of the population that came here because it's fifty five plus. And I heard um, in the prior meeting, well, we'll just do it a, a deed restriction or wherever uh, wherever it was located in the rules. We'll get that changed. Statistically, I don't see that happening because you have to have 66 percent on people who probably are going to vote against it. So, because because I well, just as I was with the gate, I think you're in the minority opinion. Yeah, well, that's that's fine. But all we're saying is the whole process of this being served was totally done wrong. Whether you go ahead, like legally, you want to serve me that notice, it would have to be served now. My 90 days would probably be up, not a month after I was here. Yeah. And changing the fines, putting us through stress, where a fine of hundred dollars a day, when it, in the book it says twenty-five, I believe, or fifty. Like who? Like, you just you can't change it. You say you follow the category, but yet it wasn't followed. And again, serve the notice without being in violation. That makes no sense. Let me let me ask a question. Um, you said you received. Full custody in 2022. We had we had temporary custody and we were giving them back to the parents here and there trying it. And it didn't and work out. So now we have they're with us full time. Okay. But their biological parents are not being disrespectful, but they are alive. Yes. Okay. All right. Um Yes, we have um, some YouTube. And I, and I think they're pertinent. Um, this comment is from uh, Wizard Man. Oh, Tom, I'm sorry, Thomas Ryman Unit 2. Before any decision is made, there needs to be, needs to check the Fair Housing Act to avoid a lawsuit. Lawsuit. I'm not sure what that is. Well, we had a lawsuit against BCLP prior, as you might remember, the 41,000 did involve fair housing. Um, 
we, we, we had to uh, withdraw previous complaints to allow that to stay. Said uh, Thomas Herman again, wasted attorney fees. I, I guess maybe it would be a reasonable solution to table this and get some uh, not only legal opinions, but some opinions from the state of Florida. Does anyone have any thoughts? Um, I do. Um, first off, the other homeowners that he may be referring to or may not be referring to are are currently, you know, being um, pursued. We know that. Um, we do have several of them. But my whole thing is I go back to when you moved in here, you, it was an over 55. And I moved in here for that purpose. Some people I have heard that have, have came to me regarding this that knew about this had said that they purposely moved in here on purpose so that they could tell their children they could not come. Maybe they should have kids. But that's, that's up to them, you know, um, on whatever age they may be, but that's up to them. So, um, well, we, we have to come up with something because I, I, I just want to describe it like this to you. If we table this, we have somebody else that comes in. They want five months and 20 days. They want another person comes in and they want five months and 30 days. Another person comes in and says, well, you gave these two that time. And then I want six months because you gave that already. Sooner or later, we have no rule. I'm sorry, you cannot. You need to have decorum. Can I ask you a question then? Yes. Since 218, how many notices have you served? We we have not been on the board since then. We only just came on the board and we, we, we have notices? served. How many notices have been served from 218 to now? One? I don't, I mean, I don't have that information. Well, if there's another outburst, I'm going to ask you to leave. What I would suggest is that it doesn't matter if it's one or a thousand. If the rule is the rule, we ultimately have to make a decision. Are we going to enforce it or not? Are we going to enforce it for the the 80 percent of the people that want it enforced or 99 percent whatever the number is or are we going to do something different so that's why i recommended it that we table it so that's my perspective i think we're going to have to i think we have to make a decision on it because we made decisions on some other people that we've had the same thing um where they were just at the abrc it didn't come to us it was it was made at the ABRC level, and those were made at, at their level, and they were enforced there. Not enforced, but upheld, or, yes. So. I'm sorry, you cannot speak like that. Ma'am, I'm going to ask you to leave. I'm not, if I have to call down code enforcement, and ask you to leave, I will do that. We will have decorum here. This is a serious situation. We're trying to be serious. Any more outbursts, I will just ask everyone to leave who's not involved in this. So what we're trying to say is, you served me with no purpose, that I hadn't violated it. If you want to go ahead and use your rule and serve me now, then go ahead. But you served me 30 days into the calendar year, which is totally false you can't you, i have 90 days legally per calendar year sir are you related to this not right now sir you need to sit down i've been there the feeling of this was my home so i know how this okay well we're not discussing your home okay thank you that's the biggest issue. You you guys, if you decide that's the rule, that's the rule, that's your opinions. But the problem is 
we were served illegally as far as I'm concerned. You've got false information on the claim too, saying the kids were registered in September when they're not registered in school in September. But that was on my sheet. So where did this information come from? They just make it up. I think we can table it, and I think we should table it. That's my perspective. I think I, I think we could go ahead and um, serve at the ninety days. Well, at this point, he's past the ninety days. So if, if we redid it, we'd be starting the whole process again. Either way, we have to come up with this long-term solution. Problem isn't going to go away. We're going to have young kids here. We're going to have a rule that says you can't have young kids here. So are we going to change the rule, which I don't see any opportunity for that happening. I just Wait, don't because look, it's in our deed restrictions. Let me ask you something, sir. Yep. What is your plans for next year with the children? We had plan to do that here. He's got the same thing. But he's busy talking. And then if we have to, we can change the address. Because there's no rule saying oh. I can't move them from my house to some kind of family member. How do that, you fight that? that? Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, this is for Mr. Vice. Um, my opinion would uh, we'll let them finish off the school year, then make a different arrangements going forward. Uh, please relay this to the board. Thanks. When is when is the school? When are you going to remove them from school to go home? I mean, to back to Canada. Worst case scenario, be the enemy. That's a school year, but we might pull them out early. We're not sure. I'm just like, Catherine, you, I saw you, Rich. I, I'm in agreement with Jim. I think it should be tabled, and I think we should seriously look into the legalities around this issue. I, 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 Catherine, I, I think the reality is what we're going to find when we go through and do all the investigation, I think we're going to find that the rule is valid, the rule can be enforced, it's whether are we going to enforce it or not, and for the 80, 90, 100%, whatever, that agrees with the rule, they're going to be pleased that we're doing it, for the ones that are in the minority, they're going to not be happy with it. But we need a long-term solution because this isn't going to go away. You're, you're going to have the problem and we're going to have other Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones and whoever has children that are under 18. We, we have to have a long-term solution. And the other problem is, is that we currently have um, some cases already in litigation. Not litigation, but they're going forward with asking the court system to allow us to enforce rules. So we already have those in the pipeline, per se, of the similar situations. Uh, is it just that they have young kids, or is the actual parents underage? Can't, can't discuss that. That's something totally different, but there is children under the age of 18 okay. involved. So I do have a question. I've been like a, trying to get the copy of the incident report and the investigation report and the minutes of the meeting, and I keep on getting the runaround. They told me I had to ask you guys today to make sure I get copies of those. Well, you're not um, you're not entitled to the minutes. Why not? Um, They're recorded. I'm entitled to the minutes. Right. We're not entitled. Arlene, did you want to speak to that? Well, the minutes do. Oh, hello. Yeah. The minutes do contain information from other cases. So you just gotta get. I don't need to take. You just they say that you can get the minutes for your meeting. I want for my meeting. I don't need the other cases. The meeting we were at, the appeals hearing, we were told there was minutes being taken, and we have that we want a copy of it. Okay, well, you did put that request in what? Monday, Friday? Monday? I put it in last Friday, but okay. then she told me when I went in today that to ask the board because, as she says, she doesn't know when, if I'll get them. Okay, well, I believe according to Florida statute, we do have 10 days to get them to you. So if you ask for them last Friday, 10 business days. And that's fine. Okay. 
So when ten business days come, we will give you a call and say, okay, come on in. Um, I mean, I go back to to two things. Um, one is on the disclosure summary, summary that you signed on November 29, 2021. Um, all persons occupying owner's partial for residential purposes must be at least 18 years of age. And we're, we're, we're not arguing this point. Right. I understand that. But you did know the rule at that time. Yes. Right. But everybody. That, who just said that? Yeah. The issue is what we signed. Now we have custody of the kids. So the, it is what it is. We can't change it. You know, like we talked to somebody, something happens to your grandkids, you're not going to just throw them all, you won't take them, right? It, it is what it is. It happens. We had no choice. We have them. They're legally our kids now. All right, I say we um, we reissue the notice. How do you all feel about that? Right, again, my, my vote, if you're looking just for my opinion, is that we should ta table it and go further. That's my perspective. Again, excuse me, I can, they're at, actually right. registered somewhere else right now, so they're not even at my house. So I'm going to serve you notices to be null and void because they're not even there. They've been registered somewhere else. You, you, I can move them from house to house. There's no rule in the book saying I can do it. Right, you can do that, but what about the other residents who don't have that luxury, who don't have that? Now, again, no, 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 but we're, the, the, problem, the, problem, the point I'm trying to make is the problem isn't going to go away. In its no, entire 100 percent, would you agree? 100 percent. So we need to come up with a long-term solution. So we're we, we've got a some kind of plan for the community to go forward. I say um, we make a motion to reissue the notice, and that will give us enough time to speak with legal counsel and also inform legal counsel of what he plans on doing is re-registering them from house to house and see what counsel says. Can you, uh, on the, uh, when you have the, the inquiry, the, the violation, there's supposed to be an investigation into this violation, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really sure. When you say investigation, I'm not really, I'm not really sure what you're looking okay, for. Either the kids first, are there or they're not. Yeah, okay. The first step is you get an incident report, mm -hmm. then you're supposed to have a committee that does an investigation and talk to all people involved in the incident, right? Ask questions, what's going on before they make a decision. That was never done. The paperwork that we got served had false information on it. Where did they get this information? They're telling us the kids were in school in September. The kids were never in school in September. Where did they get this information? It's false, and it put false information on the notice I got. How does that happen? Okay, so I make a motion to reissue the notice. You haven't answered the question. Well, then you'll have an investigation, won't you? Well, how, how do they how do they how do they put that with the kids who were at school in September when they were? Well, if they reissue the notice, then it would be a new notice. That's fine, but again, okay. you're not answering how they put I, information. I don't see the investigation. I don't see oh, it's that. Not the right. We don't see any of that. Not the investigation, the actual infraction. Right. It said kids in school since September 2022. We, we don't see oh, that. Okay, well, maybe right. you should give it to him. We're, we're looking at what you had signed. Okay. Um, and that's that's yeah. what we're looking at. I think you should have all the paperwork before we make judgments. Well, I say we make I, I make a motion to reissue, reissue the notice. And... Again, how are you going to hide if they're not there? How are you going to give us a notice? All right, we'll make a motion to table it while we speak with legal counsel.
When we find out from legal counsel, then we will give you a notice. Knows, we'll be out of here anyway. And yes, and I understand. And then when you come back, you'll re-register them at another house. So we will speak to legal counsel about no, all of this. For 90 days. And then somebody else's. Okay. Well, so I make a motion to go ahead and table um, the appeal for the ADRC hearing. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion on the board? Any, any Kevin, uh, uh, down there? Okay. Uh, all in favor of tabling it, say aye. 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 Um, did Richard say anything? Yes, he votes yes to table it. Okay. Unanimous. Okay. So are you trying to see now? Thank you. Thank you. The next item is a uh, topic is the retention pond control station. This is public works. One of the retention pump. Wait a few minutes till everybody leaves because it's kind of loud. Just let everybody get out and sleep in. Sure. Thank you. Okay. All right, to continue, uh, this is a, about retention pond control station. One of the retention pump, pump ponds control station needs to be replaced slash repaired. We received a, re a quote from AL Coval Electric. Three quotes were not obtained since AL Coval Electric is a primary proprietary vendor for this item. The recommendation is to purchase a new pump control station for the retention pond for the attached proposal. The proposed motion is to motion is to waive the three bid policy. If passed, proceed to the next motion. So I guess we have to pass that first. Can I get a second for that? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then the true motion is a motion. Wait, I'm sorry. You went so fast, I didn't really I'm, Okay. I'm sorry. All in favor, Catherine? Did you have a question? I Go ahead, Catherine. I did have a question yes, on this. I thought that it was being, is this the same pump that was being tabled until they found out? I guess, no. No. He doesn't. Well, yes, no, he yeah, does. Yes, He's going to no. explain it to you. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes, yeah. Oh. We, uh, uh, the question was. The, this, the, these, these two quotes that you have in front of you right now are protection for those pumps. Okay. It's protecting them. Currently, they have no floats, okay, or and or triggers to shut them off. Right. Okay. Right. I read that. My question was, I, it was tabled the last time. We were waiting to find out what you found out about an extended warranty on them. Was it? Yeah. Jim, I, is this the same one? That's, that's no, the, extended, one. the extended warranty was was cost prohibitive, so we're we're getting a one year warranty on the pump that we purchased. Uh, approved and that's that process is going forward this is as Vince said protecting that pump control system and if you go to the actual bid where it talks about repairing building a new pump and building a new pump station that kind of covers that and if this may help you when the water is getting low mm -hmm. so that the pump doesn't burn up the alarm with the beacon and things on it will start going it's not going to be um, sounding, but it will it will create that red alarm, alarm so that they know that there is a problem out there so that the pump that we've just spent all the money on, basically, if I'm correct, Vince, doesn't get burned up, basically. 
So and this back. is going to be like an alert type panel that's going to spare us any it's other gonna, it's, gonna, it's going to be able. It's going to allow. It's going to. On your mic. Like during, during during the summer months, from like say June till September, when we have a lot of rains, right. basically it'll be able to be able to turn into an automatic system to where it can pump one from the other and one and, and going without being able to do it manually. Now, when you do it manually, you leave it on, and if you forget to go turn it off, it just runs without the water being pumped, and then it burns all the oil inside, it, and then it screws the pump up. This is protection. For floats in a system to actually be able to turn into automatic and turn on and turn off and turn on and turn off during those rains that we have uh, when it when it becomes flooding in certain areas of the of the, of the boulevard and in the office in front. Okay, so the warning system is what's pretty much going to save the pump for over usage. Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. So, as I said, I make a motion to. Uh, uh, purchase a new retention pump, pump control for ten thousand dollars, and the bid is on the next page. For this, for the person who said, "Ooh, I thought the same thing," Th these pumps are very expensive. This is very commercial grade plumbing, basically. Um, it's and it's very pricey. It, it just is. No, the trucks are going in there. Yeah, you, you have a lot of electronics that go in with it. You have a PLC, little PLC. You have all the alarms, the starters, things of that nature. Switches. Are there any comments on, uh, from the board members? No. Vince, is it actually two control panels? Yes, there actually be one. There'll be one at the front office with that pump that we purchased. And then the other one that's on the other is the little pond by number 12 that's only there for this manual. That'll be turned an automatic pump to pump into the big one. So we're protecting two pumps? Yes. Okay. Two different areas. Does anybody else have anything? Billy, do you have anything? Go okay, Jim, you ready? Yes. All right. I make. I'm looking for <laughs> approval to, to uh, purchase the pump for ten thousand. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I don't think there's a second. Oh, there, there, oh, I did. I thought she seconded, but yeah, no. I did. She, I seconded. Okay. Richard votes yes. R Richard votes yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, this is a topic for um, the the old fans here at the clubhouse, which will be taken down. The new ones uh, installed when the building is uh, when they're working on it. Uh, the ceiling fans will be taken down at the clubhouse and replaced with new ones. Um, I um, belong to the Marine Corps League um, up on Sunshine Grove Road, and they are um, just getting finished now with a um, outdoor deck. And I had gone to the commandant and asked him if he could use the ceiling fans that we would be taking down from here. And he said yes. So um, has asked if Brookridge would donate four fans to them because they could use them. I'd like to um, propose motion to donate four of the old used ceiling fans to commandant Jim Bravico at the Marine Corps League 708 for their use. Do I have a second? Any discussion? No. You okay, Jim? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Just, just one other thing. Um, they're also going to be taking down. I, I, according to Vince, our superintendent, they're going to be taking down the fans and the chandeliers. And from what I understand, um, anyone that wants to mm -hmm. get them, they'll, they'll be given out. You know, just coming. If you can use them, I mean, these chandeliers probably been up for 50 years, but <laughs> I mean, no, so, you know, if, if anybody would like them or, or you know, um, once they come down, just let Vince know and, and if you could use them, just come up and, uh, you know, let Vince know and we'll take them down. If anybody needs a work light, they're coming at those yeah. two. Right. 
I propose a motion to donate four of the old ceiling fans to the Commandant Jim Bravico at the Marine Corps League 708 for their use. All in favor? Aye. 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 Rich votes yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks. All right. Uh, we'll open Richard voted yes. Okay. Yes. okay. We'll yep. open it up for um, member comments. Uh, Sandy Lewis, you're up first with yours. Sandy Trouble Lewis, Unit 1. Um, I just have a question for the board. I want to know how to get a petition going so we can request one of the amendments be adjusted. You exactly it is the age restriction amendment. Okay, so it's listed in the 720 and it's all right there. What is it? How, um, how to do a, um, a, a petition and everything is right there in the 720. Okay, thank you for your help. Mm -hmm. Sandy, I'll be available next uh, Monday and Tuesday if you want to give me a call. I will have, have you help you help you look into it. Uh, I, I do. While I don't want to dissuade you from doing that, the statistical probability, in my opinion, is zero that you'll get it done because you, you're, the, the community, the demographics that we have, even if you've got it on a ballot for a deed restriction, and the last vote we had is a perfect example, we couldn't get 66% on a vote that I thought we had a pretty good probability of getting it done. I think there's no probability of getting it done. So before you go to the effort, I would ask that you just maybe think about it tonight and through the weekend, if you really want to go forward. If you do, I'm happy to help. Um, Robin, is it all right if I just answer your question since I had already asked you about it? Robin Napier, Unit 3, asked, when did they announce a date and time on the home, on the Fleetway, on, I think you meant the Fleetway home for auction. Okay, so all that information is listed on the county website. They handle all of that. We have nothing to do with that, absolutely nothing. Yes, it was sold at $9,900. Um, they start the bid $100 over what a judgment is made for, and that's the county's rules and everything that they do. We have nothing to do with that. Did you have something else you needed? While she's walking up to the mic, she had a question last week, and it's a perfect time to bring it up. She was asking about the $91,000, what happened to it. Just so that everybody understands, there was $91,000 that was in the operating fund. It should have been moved to the reserve fund in 2022. And before you ask why wasn't it moved, there, there really isn't a why, and, and there's no reason to look into the why. The money was not uh, misappropriated. It was not removed. It was in the operating account and stayed there the entire time earning interest on that money. We moved $91,140, and it's also noted on the October's Treasury report. So if you want, if you want, to, if you want to look at the October's Treasury report, it, it references that. But that $91,000 was moved into reserve in October, and when we moved the money from operating to reserve, probably before the ink dried on the receipt, I heard it already had that money invested. So we're earning interest on it. The 91000 is there. It's not missing. We're making money on it. And you're welcome to look again at any one of the reports on the website that show the balances of where stuff is. Uh, if you have questions, you're welcome to call. Go ahead. Thank you. Oh, I had a question on Fleetway. Did we get our money? Did Because wasn't uh, Brook Ridge owed violations and all that? Did we get that out of the money that was made? Not yet, because as you know, the county is still completely down on computers. There is no transactions. There's no court um, things being done. There's there's nothing. But then we have the expectation. Yes, that we're yes we will get our when they get hit when they clear his his check and things like that. They know our judgment is sitting there and that has to come to us. But right now we haven't got anything. And he has not got his 
um, certificate, his uh, deed and all that because they can't process it. Okay. Did you have another question you wanted to ask? And I had another one about last week. I asked if somebody had a contract that was employed with us and I was told no, but I've yes. heard that there is. So I, Brookridge, I know who to believe. Right, Brookridge has no written agreement, employment agreement with Mr. Pizzo, and that's who you're referring to. Yeah. Has no written agreement. No contracts. There is no contract with Mr. Oh. Pizzo. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, PM. While she's coming to the microphone, uh, if anybody's been on Morelli, you'll notice that the burned up house is essentially collapsed in they're in the process of removing that, so it's a great first step on that. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Pam Prevo, Unit 3. Um, I just had a question about the registered sex offenders that are posted on the board there. Um, there is one resident who is listed on the board living on Scepter, and I have seen him residing at a house on Rialto down the road from me. So I'd like to know how they are able to move around without notifying anybody. Well, they have the the sheriff's department that they have to notify if they move. I will definitely relook them all up to see if anybody has notified because that is a big thing. If they don't notify within, it's either 10 or 30 days, um, then they will definitely come and get them. But um, that's easy to look up. It's public record. They have to do that, but I will look and see who, if anybody changed residence, and then if they change, we'll see if it's gone any further. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Hey, okay, is there anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Nancy Whetstone, Unit 4. <clears throat> um, in relationship to the article about these under 18s, it's in our deed restrictions. It's uh, in the 4 8 2018 amendment, Article 3, Section 12. So when you're looking at it, that's where you can go get it. And it does state 90 days within a calendar year. So everything you said there is okay. Uh, but Jim asked a very good question. That's great, we've got it, but what? how do we enforce it? And that is the responsibility of the board. It's not the responsibility of community residents turning their neighbors in, right? So to enforce it equitably has to be done for all that has a situation like that. And somehow the office or administration has to come up with a policy, practice, whatever, to make sure that people let you know, and then you're gonna to have to probably document date and times and names of everyone. So you gotta come up with a way to do that. If you can't, you can't enforce it. And if you can't enforce it, it shouldn't exist. Right, and I'll, I'll just say this, that we also hope that people who move in here are adult enough that they follow the rules without having to be called up and prompted to and things like that. So that's a two-way street, I think. You're exactly right. But if we can't enforce it, then it shouldn't be there. That's my only point. Thank you. Steve Smetko, Unit 2. Just kind of tagging along to that. Something that uh, I know I've discussed with my Please family. speak up a little. They're having trouble hearing on you. Okay. Okay. Something I've discussed internally with friends of that. Has any, the board given any thought, uh, and I know this falls under code enforcement, but has the board given any thought to actually having perhaps hiring an individual, okay, to be responsible for exactly what we're talking about here? Okay, and it wouldn't be limited to just well, children, you know, who's got kids in here under 18 or whatever. It could be, for example, something that I'm aware of, and that is a family down the street from me 
uh, is living there. Neither one of them is under is over 55. Uh, and what happened is that they had someone else sign the lease for them, and they're living there. Okay, that type of thing. And I realize it's really difficult to keep track of that. And I realize that code enforcement has a lot of different responsibilities. Okay, but you know, I'm thinking if there was almost somebody that's who was really focused on those kind of things, then perhaps they could come up with a policy. You know, uh, so instead of, oh, I'm just going to move my kids after 90 days, I'll move them to another family's. Well, that is a change of a rule, I'm sorry, which obviously I'm not sure you're thinking. You need to change that rule. It's 90 days per child, you know, period, right, for the year. I don't care if they're in just one household for 90 days. Um, so it, that type of thing where, you know, give, it, give somebody a chance, give somebody a fighting chance to keep on top of some of these things. Right, and unfortunately, I think it goes back to we can't go on people's property. Um, we can't go up to their door and knock and say, um, how old are you and how old are you and, and things like that. So it that makes it difficult um, that, it, you know, that's the law. But the other thing is, too, is that, like I just said to this young lady here, it goes back to personal responsibility. And sometimes... The gentleman was arguing the wrong point. Yes. It wasn't the, 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 the early notice. He's admitting. The, the I'm changing the system. Right. System, right? Yeah. So can, can, can we get you to come to the mic so that right. you two folks in here, it's not fair to them. The point is, Jim, it's like, if you come to the mic, you can bring it. All right, I will. <laughs> That's the rule. Follow the rule. <laughs> no, it, it, it's because if you're coming, fortunately, as we all know, you have those people that bought in here, 55. That's what they want. And some people, you know, the obvious thing was he knew he was chicken system. He didn't care. He got in here. Now he wants to change our rules. Well, I'm sorry. Tough luck. You know, the rest of the 85% of us or 90% of us that bought for that reason. It isn't because we hate kids. It, it's, that's why we bought in here, though. We didn't want to be out living around them. So, unfortunately, in that case, you had a whole group of people supporting them that obviously... They're, they're more than willing to script the roles too. So to depend on people to do the right thing, I hate to say, it's not going to work. Okay? It's, it, some people will, you know, not because Bill's saying locks keep honest people out. If, if you're not honest, you don't care the lock. Right? So we just, uh, again, you just you just need, I think we need to enforce, put some more teeth into something like that. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Oh. I didn't. I haven't been around. I will. Mary Story, Human Six. Debbie, I do have one question with this incident with the 18 year old, uh, less under the age of 18, and you're looking for legal advice. That bylaw took effect in 2018. Anyone yes. prior to that who moved in here? Are we grandfathered against that, with that, as were the people who were not 55 when this turned 55? Can you see if there's a grandfathering in there? I will definitely see that. And my biggest thing is that, and I'll, I'll be honest, it wasn't, um, and I, I feel bad that, you know, this has happened in any situation. We see it more and more today that grandparents have their children. My biggest thing with the whole situation wasn't that um, he asked I, I, that, them that, to be for nine I don't want to talk about that situation. I'm talking about in general as a community. It's kind of a tough thing to say mm -hmm. to people when you get legal custody of your grandchildren, either sell your house and get out or put your kids in forced care. And the good part of the people living in this development are not in a financial situation. If they were, they would have different housing, I'm sure. And I'm not knocking out development, don't get me wrong. But we all live here because of the income that allows us to live as comfortably as we do. So I really think the situation might need to be looked at differently because the times are changing. And more people, because of circumstances in the world, are getting custody of their grandkids. So it's just something that the board might want to think about and take into consideration. But I don't want to use something three minutes because I've got a bunch of questions. Um, when we, the, the house on Fleetwood, 
Did we have did we have full possession of that house? Was that house issued to us in full? No. no. So that's why it went to auction. It was sold completely okay. at auction. And we are just one of the people bearing the money. So we're not getting, we're just getting a portion of the $9,900. We're getting what is owed back. Back to us only. Okay. Um, you guys, the board met with Traffic Safety and AVRC on Good Friday to discuss the violations for speeding. Can I ask, please, how many board members attended that meeting? I wasn't there. I was uh, at a doctor's appointment. I was here, Mary, um, as the liaison. Li li um, I was here in the with um, Leo. And Leo was there? No. How many does it make? Four. There were four board members there. That forms a legal quorum. Therefore, that was an illegal BOD meeting. Okay. There was no notice posted that that meeting was going to take place. The only thing posted that day was a closed meeting for personnel. So in the future, I think we just need to keep in mind that if four of you are going to a meeting like that, so you're not accused as people for what's in the past have been accused, that was an illegal meeting. And you need to just keep that in mind for the future because it should have been publicized and put out an email to the residents because any board meeting and any committee started by the board, residents are permitted to attend, and they have to be open with the exclusion of legal and personnel. And that does not fall into either one of those, that category. Just for the future, I'm saying for your, for your own protection. Okay. You guys, we took down all the trees on the median. Well, we took the trees down, and I understand the necessity of it, there was discussion down the road when growing season comes, we're going to talk about rejuvenating the median. Has there been any discussion? Has beautification talked about it? No. And the reason why is we're not even at that point yet. We may even have to do that next year because they're going to be coming in here in May to do the roads. We're going to need those medians for people to park on. So if we have, um, if we go ahead now and plant all this stuff that would be really nice then we have no place for people to park how long is the project going to take Two months six months uh, eight months several probably a couple about three weeks about three weeks so right. we're in june we can't consider planting something in june or july to start rejuvenating the meeting um, i don't think or at least look into right. it what it's going to cost what's going to be involved in it what the best time they would think to plant it I mean, we, we took out something that was beautiful. We should consider putting something back. And we have, we have spoke, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, right, I mean, I'll, I'll gladly follow up with you, Mary, on it. We have spoke with um, beautification. Um, Nancy's sitting right there and, and spoke with them. And they said that when we were ready, that they would definitely consult with us. They don't know if they'll be able to do that type of work. Which, right, they don't have enough manpower. So, well, I would, thought, I would have thought we would have hired a nursery. We have money in the budget that we would have hired a nursery to come in right, but, and do this. Right, but there was no sense in hiring a nursery. When, no, but at least get some estimates and see if we, what's feasible and what's not. Right. Because we want the issues done to go. But as, as you know, estimates change every, every month. The other question I have is in November. Yes. yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, what I what I might suggest, and I'd be happy to, to take this on in, in April or May when I have an opportunity. Um, maybe I could get with the beautification committee, and I think we kind of need a plan. We're going to put trees in this location. We're going to put bushes in that location. We're going to put flowers in this location. Whatever the plan is, and then we can go forward because some of those trees we're going to need. That's all I'm asking is let's get something in line I, I to see that we can rejuvenate the meeting. I'd be happy to spend some time with the beautification committee. The other question I have is we had two bylaws passed in November. Have those bylaws been registered with the county yet? I'm sorry. No, they have not. Why? Because the attorney said that they were not a legal vote because of the method of the voting. So do we not need to let the residents know that those bylaws are non-existent, they're invalid, and our bylaws stand as before? 
that a snowbird cannot serve on this committee? I would say no. We, yes, yes and no. Yes, we need to let the residents know, but with the Florida statute, a, a snowbird can be on the committee. And you're, you're shaking your head. Well, we're, we have a difference of opinion. We have a very big difference of opinion because you guys have yet to come to realize that our bylaws, articles of incorporation, rules and regulations are our governing documents. They do supersede Florida statutes. And, and that's where we disagree, Mary. And we talk, we, and you, we, we talk, they certainly do. What would be the purpose? Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Mary, we, we, let me, please let me speak and then I'll stop. We, we, we have a different. Somebody screaming at me from the audience. We, we get that. Okay. So everyone take a, a deep breath. We disagree with this. We've spoken to the attorney that says that 720 does supersede our rules. You disagree with that. I get that. That's where we stand. Then can you get from us the attorney in writing saying that our that exactly that, that our articles of incorporation by laws and that do, do, do not supersede 720? Because what sense does it make? For us to have articles and cooperation, bylaws, rules and regulations, we, we go back and forth, we make people vote on bylaws. Why would we have to do this if they don't really count? And all you have to do is say, here's your rules and regs, follow them. And I think the reason for that, to answer your question, the reason that Florida statute should supersede, whether the attorney has a different opinion or not, in my, again, in my opinion, if you have a Florida statute, it has no value if any homeowners association, ours or anyone else's, can make any rules that supersede those or that are in direct conflict of them. Well, why would you have a Florida statute? It doesn't make any sense. It's like having a federal law. You said, oh, my homeowners association doesn't want you to have to pay taxes so you don't have to pay federal taxes. It doesn't make sense, Mary. Jim, I'm going to say this one more time. Please do. Your attorney that you currently use two or three years ago allowed a bylaw to be passed that is in total contradiction with 720s. He drew it up, we put it out for vote. And that is the one that says one person per household can run for the board. And that is totally, totally opposite of what 720 says. So if your attorney is saying 720 supersede our bylaws and articles of incorporation, he drew up that. We really need to get a new attorney. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Nancy? Okay. And Jim, if you want to go ahead. Okay. Nancy Lashara, Unit 1. I'm on the Beautification Committee. And we do not plant trees. It was only females here, okay? So we do not do this. And also, there was no water on the boulevard to water with anything. So when we do water, we have to take buckets with us, okay? So I don't think that the beautification will plant trees. No, it's <laughs> you know, a I'm just yeah, I'm not a nursery. You know, you know. I mean, that it's just that's just how it is. You know, we will plant flowers and stuff, but somebody has to water them. We don't have the time every day to go out and water flowers. Okay, um, each one of us has our own little area. So if you want us to go and just do the boulevard, everything else is gonna die, okay? You have to understand that I go every weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and work in the front, the office, in front of the gate, all the way down, by myself. I don't even get help. So I don't see how we can plant trees. I think that's gonna be more a bit project instead of mine. So I'm just kind of like, kind of saying, I don't think the beautification committee could do this. Okay, thank you. Nancy, Nancy, I do have a question for you. My neighbor, her name is Linda. Um, she's a snowbird. She purchased 
uh, file brush. We took know. it yeah. over to yeah. Jim Snyder's. She was just wondering if it had been planted yet we, and where it was planted. We did talk about that at our meeting last week, I think it was. And the only place where we think, and I'm sure that friends might go with this also, is right in front of the sheriff office. There is right now Marigold's there because there was a tree at one time there. I don't know, it was way before my time. And it just died, I guess. So we talked about putting it there. So um, I don't know if it was Barb or Carol, somebody was supposed to get back with the lady and talk to her about it. Because the stuff that's in there, we have two men that said they could plan it for us if they, if she said okay. You know, and if the board and everybody says it's okay. Because they would go match up with all those right there. Okay, thank you. Okay. Can I just say something real quick to, to Nancy? Um, I work in the office and we have the other girls in the office and we get a lot of compliments about how beautiful the flowers are. So, thank is, you. It is appreciated. Thank you. And we love what we do, but we just can't take on a lot of stuff like that. And we have person, to. She actually thought that the flowers were fake. I just she said they were so beautiful, I had to touch them. I thought they were fake. So, you're thank you. Appreciated. We, we like, like, like to hear that. You know, I, I enjoy seeing them because I live right there also, you know, and. Um, it's just what it is, and I think Vince would back me up also saying that us females cannot plant a tree. <laughs> Thank you. Nancy, that's what what I was suggesting is that we come up with a plan because clearly you can't plant a 50 or 100 foot tree, whatever they are. But we are going to do, I would guess, and, and again, I'm just guessing and making a hypothesis, that we're going to do some bushes, some trees, some flowers, some something. So I think we should come up with a plan, and then when the plan says we need to put a tree here, then yes, we should have professionals because, as you said, we don't have totally. the capability. And, and I'm not going to, I'm just going like, to throw this out there. We do have two men on our committee that are landscapers, okay? That's what they did for a living. And I'm sure probably one of them, definitely because he's here year-round, would probably help do that, you know, because he does a lot of stuff like that for us. And um, so when it gets to that point, you know, you could maybe talk to him. I'm sure he would probably help you, you know. So, okay, thank you. I think what Mary is trying to tell us uh, that we just need to come up with a nice game plan. We're not expecting the beautification to go out and show yeah, put trees in, in the ground. Um, Thank you, Vince. You know, it's it's more or less coordinating the the what we need to want to do out there. We can get a few nurseries involved to go ahead and see what what our already established plants plants and, and try and go towards a more of a, a um, more Florida friendly. Um, concept on the boulevard because you, you, the water is kind of scarce out there. By the time it gets water, does somebody puts a bucket of water on it or it rains. So um, I think sometime, you know, probably last week of May after the paving is done and we take an assessment of everything like that, and I think, you know, beautification and the board and public works can get involved with, with making the, the decision of who we can try and go, go with and Try to formulate a game plan for the for the medians. Thank you, Liz. You welcome. I just didn't want the median to be forgotten about. No, it's the not. that the beautification yeah. committee should plant these things. It was get their ideas. Their right. Input. We understood what you were saying. Yeah. yeah. Didn't come to sound before. Yeah. yeah. Did you have something? Else? Yeah. yeah. You can take when, one whenever second. everybody's done, we can finish up and we can move on. It's all good. Yes, ma'am. Please. Peggy Justice, Unit 3. With all our rules and regulations in here, why are we allowing sex offenders to live in this development? Whether it's a sex offender for children or whatever else they're guilty of, because before the rule was changed, 
they were already in here and they had already established their uh, residence. That was a decision that was made by the previous, previous, previous boards. Am I correct, Arlene, on that? Yes. So we don't, we don't, uh, we don't allow that any longer. But there is something in, in effect that they can no longer move in here. Yes. Because you know we've got a lot of older people, a lot of things. Right. Exactly. Here, let alone the children that are here, whether they're legal or not. Right. We don't need that in our community. Well, we do post it um, for the ones that are here, but we don't allow that any longer because remember you have to do the background check when you um, come in here, which is also the national sex offender check, also. What happens if they do their crime after they've moved in here and they pass their background check? Mm -hmm. are, then, are, does the police department notify you that they are in here? No, they cannot. Once they do their time, they have done their time. The police are only the babysitters to make sure they report. That is all they are there to do. They do not get... They cannot come in and they cannot say that John Smith, did you know Liz at? They cannot do that because when they re-enter society, they have been deemed to have paid their debt to society and they have to re-enter the society. And in fact, they make it very well known on the the um, on the on their uh, sheets that they post that you, Right, they notice that you are not allowed to bother them, that they have done their they have done their their time per se. But you can post it, and if you do notice when there is movement where somebody that is a registered sex offender says move, moves from A Street to C Street, the Hernando County Sheriff's Department will put that out as an alert. But that's all they can do. They are not there to come into your knock at your door or your door. They're only there to babysit and make sure they report in accordance with their probation or parole. Uh, did, we, did, did, we, did we come up with a um, final decision on what we're gonna do if someone's speeding, what the violation is going to be, whether we're gonna have a violation, whether they're gonna be a suspension or a fine, or is that still pending? And the reason that I ask that, go ahead. It's still pending. The reason I ask that is, uh, in speaking with some of the residents, there's a concern that, and I'll give you an example. I'm driving in, I'm speeding, I get a violation, it's my second one, for example. I should get a suspension, I should lose my barcode. But if my granddaughter comes in with her car, that we can prove it's her car, and that's the violation, then the resident shouldn't get the suspension. They should still get the fine. They just have to pay the fine. So as we are discussing this further, I'd like to go with that thought process. Does that make sense? In, in, in theory, does anyone have an issue with that? Yes, ma'am. And then I have two more things. Lynn Southwood, Unit 4. You said if your granddaughter came in, you're not in the car. How can you control anything she does? And how are you responsible for anything she does? Or you're not. I guess that kind of that's what I'm suggesting. You're not responsible for the, the suspension piece of it. You're still responsible for the... No, you can't control what anybody does well, by yourself. Then I, I would disagree with that. I, I, would, I was more concerned about the suspension and... We certainly can, can discuss that well, as well. That definitely needs a discussion because I'm dead set against that. If I had someone come to visit me and they got a fine, they got a ticket, and you tried to charge me money, yeah. we'd be in court because I wouldn't pay it. Because that's wrong. Well, they do it outside the it's wrong. I'm and sorry. And that's where we disagree. And, and I think some other members would disagree. I just wanted to have it this go ahead. I just wanted to have it discussed as we're going through that process about the suspension piece. Yes, Nancy. Hi, Nancy Whetstone, Unit 4. Um, so, 1, 720-303, and I'd have to look at the further down sections, does state that you can suspend the violator 
and anyone who lives within that property, brothers, sisters, residents, guests, whatever. So 720, Florida 720 says you can. So that's just a take back. Yes. Well, if she was visiting, visiting. the property because she's a guest. So anyway, right. we'll go there. So right. it is it was just brought up yep. as a discussion. Right. So the other thing, though, where I think I heard Jim, you say that you can take their barcode away. 72303 um, states you can't inhibit ingress or egress from their property. So you really couldn't take we, their barcode we away. Well, I, I would, he just kind of mentioned I, I would that disagree. I, I, I believe what we can't do is we can't stop them from coming in. We can just make them go through the line where they have to not use the barcode. That is not stopping them from coming in. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. Okay. Yep. Okay. The second item I had was there. Apparently, I'm away. Yeah. Just leave it on, please. Get my dad. Harold, hi. Unit three. As far as this is. Carol and Kai, Unit 3. As far as the sex offenders living in here, when Greg was still here, just before, not long before you guys came on board, I went to him because I get the notice from the Florida Sheriff's Department. And we had somebody move in on Central. He moved in with someone else, an older person. And I questioned, how could that be allowed? And I was told from Greg that as a homeowner, you can have whomever you'd like to live in your home, whether they're a sex offender or not. I said, well, you might as well just throw out that clearance that we pay for. This person lives there. And the one thing I do want to say is thank you for posting the pictures because they were not up there for the longest time. And I asked about that. This person just lives, moved in with an older person. Years ago, I was told uh, there were whatever, partners, whatever you call it. <laughs> but I don't understand, you know, in some places how how that's to be. He's still there. And he didn't pay us a background check. I doubt that very much because he's on the wanted, well, well, not the wanted list, but the problem list. <laughs> Is there nothing that can be done about that? There was, um, I'll just say this to be kind. There was things approved previously that um, may should have not been. And we have, um, and, and as you know, Mr. Schubert is, is no longer here. So, so this is not going to happen again. Because I, no. I keep getting that notice and I'm watching. Yes. Uh -huh. well, mainly because at one time I was a foster parent for many years and I see what happens to children. That's right, like, exactly. Uh, as prejudice. Right. And I totally agree with that. Yes. But we have other protocols in place now. Well, I'll be letting you know if I see one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Three, I, I, I have three final things, and I'll try to be very brief. Uh, well, maybe not. Uh, I, yes, thank you. Um, I've had numerous residents come up to me and ask me, Jim, can you not put a CD in Bank of China, Bank of any nationality, Bank of Israel, Bank of France, Bank of UK, Bank of wherever? Yes, I will. I will look at going into only domestic USA banks. Um, and I understand it. The first one of Bank of China, one expires on April 16th. So in six days, that CD expires and matures. And then three days later on the 19th, the second one matures. Once those mature, then we're done and we're out. So everyone can rest easy at night. The second item I had is that um, I utilized the kitchen today. Thank you, by the way, for the board for giving me that opportunity. One of the things that came up, um, is that it's not the cleanest kitchen in the world. And what I'd like to ask the board, would you have any opposition to either somebody from the um, uh, clubhouse or an outside cleaner, a 
for lack of a better term, come up and do a full 100% cleaning to that. So it's clean not only for bingo, but for any other de department to use that. Okay, with okay, if you could, that'd be awesome. And the last item I had is that I spoke to a couple of the uh, other directors. I keep getting inquiries. Jim, have you seen 720? It's going to change. There's a house bill going on on, on this topic or that topic. Uh, we, we need to change it. It came up with Mary of changing our rules and regulations. Have you looked at that? And the reality is, no, I haven't. I don't have the time. I just don't have the time. Doing the treasure work is, is taking up the majority of my time. So what I recommend is that we have a couple board members, and I spoke to Linda and to uh, Catherine, and asking would they kind of lead, for lack of a better term, uh, a mini group to look into those and they agreed to do that. So if everybody's okay with that, I want to suggest that. So people know, hey, if you have a question at 720 or uh, uh, one of the bylaws, rules and regulations or whatever, that you know where to go first. Not that I'm not happy to answer the question. It's a matter of minutes. You only have so many in every day. Those are the things I had. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, do you want to tell everybody how Soup. many? Soup and, and sandwich. How many? Please? We did uh, just today. We did the inaugural uh, first uh, Jim and Kathy special lunch and soup and salad. Uh, we had 15 lunches that were delivered today, uh, so we put that together. Um, so it worked out well. We're going to do another one the second Wednesday in May. We plan to do another one. So if you have people shut it's people who can use. Uh, soup and sandwich, we'd be happy to do that. Just let me know. And it is 100% confidential. For example, when my friend Ron, he went to Mr. X's house and he went to Mr. C's house. So, Did you want to give your number out again? Yes, my number is 231 392 3303. It's in the directory and you can find me at the admin building more than I'm supposed to be. All righty. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anything else? Okay, we're going to go ahead and adjourn this meeting. It's 8.51 p.m. April 10th, 2024. Everyone have a good night. Be careful going home. It's going to be bad weather tomorrow.